is item A, interim presentation re information technology study. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who don't <clears throat> know who I am, I'm Dr. Picard. I was engaged by the town manager to study the IT status in Rocky Hill, make some recommendations, and uh, come up with a plan for the future. Uh, I do not have the study completed uh, in the sense of a written uh, document at this time, but it was my understanding that some members of the council wanted an interim report. And on top of that, I also wanted to take an opportunity to ask you folks uh, your opinions. So let me first uh, state to you that I've interviewed, well, just about every um, leader in every department, um, members of almost all the departments. Um, in some instances, I only met with the um, department head, but I've also met with uh, representatives of support staff uh, in this building and in other places. So, I mean, I've had a lot of interviews with folks throughout uh, Rocky Hill. On the positive side, um, I find that your staff in Rocky Hill is to be commended for this, are of, in my opinion anyway, extremely high quality. They are all very dedicated and they are knowledgeable in their areas that they're responsible for and some knowledgeable in areas that they're not responsible for too. But uh, you're to be commended because the community I think is well served by um, the staff that I've had an opportunity to deal with. Uh, you're also um, the recipient of a positive in the sense that uh, approximately three years ago, the town of Rocky Hill went on a server project to uh, create a cluster of servers and to virtualize servers. Uh, that's very, very positive. You have two in this building and two over in the police department and they talk with each other. So they're not only talking and saying hello, but they're also synchronizing files and services so that if something were to occur to one of those machines, then they would be able to turn over responsibilities of um, whatever services are being run on a given machine immediately to uh, one of the other three servers that are available. So that's a very positive thing. Uh, for the town as far as um, IT is concerned. There are, however, some issues that I would like to at least uh, make you aware of, and in my final report I will provide more detail. Uh, first of all, uh, the network itself, um, not necessarily dealing with workstations or servers, but with the network, the connectivity that occurs between these machines, printers, uh, internet, etc. You have a lot of switches that perform that function. So it allows any one particular computer to speak to another individual computer uh, through the network wires. They go through switches which do exactly what the term says. It switches from one port to another allowing communication. The problem from my perspective is that you have equipment that is old and some extremely antiquated. Uh, you have switches that are anywhere from five years old to 13 years old. Um, that is an exceptional length of time uh, to expect equipment to uh, perform. In addition to that, with changes that have occurred in operating systems and changes that have occurred with all the bad guys out there on the internet and on networks, um, your equipment, uh, fi uh, firewall, etc., needs to be upgraded because it is not really as capable as it should to be able to thwart some of the attacks. Uh, as I stated to the mayor just before this meeting, you have a lot of information about 
townspeople on your network and you also have um, a large pipe, so to speak, to the internet. Uh, those of you that have cable to your house, you probably have somewhere around 15 megabits. Uh, the town has the opportunity to move into the Nutmeg network, and that's going to provide a thousand megabits, a gigabit connection to the internet, which is very positive to the community because the state is running this out and providing it throughout the state, as they have associated with the school board and town libraries. So communication uh, across the internet for everyone is going to be enhanced. And in my conversations with a number of department heads, more and more things they would like to do associated with internet access as far as townspeople are concerned, uh, associated with services that the town provides. So that's on the positive side. On the negative side, however, uh, a lot of the bad guys out there in the world love the fact that, or would love the fact, that you have a gigabit connection to the Internet because there is a thing called a distributive denial of service attack. And they're going on all the time, and they come from places in the world that aren't necessarily uh, very friendly to uh, the United States or to America or its way of life. And therefore, having the ability to go into large networks with very large connectivity uh, opportunities gives them the ability to co-opt your machines and therefore make them what are generally referred to as zombies. I know that we have television programs and so forth that are talking about that. But in the technical field, there are zombies, machines that have been taken over and you don't even know it. And they're running a Trojan on your system and when they receive the right signal, they are able to use your wide connection, your big pipe, to attack any number of different places in the world. The reason why I'm pointing this out is, since you have some equipment that is exceptionally old, the ability to deal with some of the changes that have occurred within the Internet community, not just with people, but how the Internet runs, your machines are not really equipped to be able to handle some of these attacks, to thwart them, etc. And you're not the only one. I mean, I'm not suggesting that Rocky Hill is the place in the whole world that has this problem. Many other places, companies, businesses, the federal government, they're all making upgrades because they want to protect themselves from the kinds of attacks that are being propagated out there. I don't want to get too technical about them, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions if any of you do, excuse me, do have any on the technical aspects. The second problem area that I see is you have workstations that are also somewhat on the older side. You have some machines that are relatively current and others that are 10 years old. Uh, that's a problem. Um, it's a problem because you have a lot of machines that cannot run the current operating system, as an example. Many machines, including the town manager, runs Windows XP. Now, a lot of people at home are using Windows XP and they're quite happy with it. Many businesses, approximately one-third of the businesses in the United States, still use XP. However, Microsoft will no longer support it as of April of 2014, which means any updates, patches, security, etc., that would normally be put out and is available today if you're running XP after April won't be, which speaks to the first point that I made even more so because you will have machines that are more vulnerable and those need to be addressed. In addition to that, you have software that is not consistent. As an example, uh, files saved by the town manager are in a different format than files saved by Jess. I, oh, there you are, <laughs> before you were back there. Um, her software is more current and uses a different filing system. So therefore, the ability to communicate requires extra effort, is what I'm suggesting. 
effort that wouldn't have to exist if everything was more consistent. In addition to that, the hardware that you are running on workstations really can't support some of the new operating systems and office software that would be available. So that becomes problematic for you folks in the future. You also have terminals. Uh, I don't know whether or not you're all familiar with the concept of a terminal, but most people when they operate on their computers, they have a computer in front of them, it has memory, it has an operating system, it has a hard drive, and when you bring up, as an example, Microsoft Word, it's running on your system in front of you. Well, as part of the project three years ago, they moved into creating a terminal environment on the servers. They bought some servers with some extra horsepower at the time to be able to allow people to run the software on the server and all you would see would be the result on your screen because you don't really have a full-blown computer. You have this little box that enables communication with the server and with you as the user. You move your mouse, you type in the keyboard, it goes to the server, the server activates and sends the screenshot back to you. Some of those are old, some of them are problematic, some of the newer ones are more efficient and offer less problems. But what was available three years ago with the server purchase back then is now becoming somewhat problematic as far as running the software as uh, people try to access similar things. The solution to that is beefing up memory on the servers. They have 64 gigs. That is not nearly enough for a server serving the needs of a town like Rocky Hill. I know 64 gigs for all of you uh, sitting there working on your home computer you're saying, my God, if I know how much it is, it's either four or eight, maybe even two. And he's talking 64 gigs. My God, that's so much. Well, Microsoft designed their operating system, to, server operating system 2008 and 2012 to deal with two terabytes. That's 2,000 megabytes. And while I'm not saying you need all of that, what I am suggesting is to make some of the problems go away that people are having with these terminals, whether or not it's the Panologic cubes or the HP terminals. Um, memory has to be improved in the servers themselves. In addition to that, and I'm not trying to suggest that everything is bad because again, I wanna go back and you've got some really great people working in, in town here. And a lot of those people are working in the police department and they have some significant issues. There are other departments that have as well, and I'll deal with those in my written report. But as an example, you've got a phone system that's so old, they're buying parts on eBay to keep it running. That's really unacceptable for a police department. Um, I'm not blaming the police department. What I'm suggesting is that things should have been improved a long time ago and they haven't been. Uh, the end result is that you have a server room over, or a closet, I should say, over in the police department that is so crowded, so crowded, that if they were able to improve the phone system with something newer, they would save a tremendous amount of space because everything has been miniaturized to the point where everything that existed before doesn't need to exist in that same format. So that's an important issue. You also have a problem with staffing. IT staff, specifically. You don't have enough. Um, you have three people down there, and it's my understanding from, from conversations that I've had with a number of different people that those three people historically, even though they worked in the same IT department, ran in silos. If you're not familiar with that concept, one really didn't talk a lot to the other two, regardless of who the one is. So each of them had certain responsibilities. The end result is that you have three people, one of whom is exceptionally knowledgeable about the network. 
and the other two have knowledge about the network, but not nearly to the extent of one of your staff people. You better hope he doesn't get hit by a bus because you got a real problem if that's the case. And as I stated to the mayor in a meeting prior to this one, uh, staffing is an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, you need to have people who are up to speed on the network. You also need to have training associated with people. One of the questions that I asked almost everybody is what has been trained? In other words, what kind of training do you have or has been offered to you? And that is very intermittent, is somewhat very specific, and what normally occurs is we have a new operating system. Here it is. Here's your new computer. Have fun. And again, I'm not necessarily criticizing the staff, but you don't have enough staff to deal with the issues as well as to provide some training. And your staff people themselves have had limited training made available to them. So being able to keep up with what's current in the industry is a problem. So, one of the things associated with staffing is you have five policemen who are doing part of their job in IT. And they're doing it because they have to do it. They're doing it because you don't have enough staff to address all the issues that they need. And one of the first things that the chief said to me when we met was I need an IT staff person for the police department. What he's got is five, not full time, but they all have a segment of their respective jobs and together it's probably a little more than a full time person. And that's problematic from my point of view. And not to completely divorce the police from IT because they have very specialized needs. And therefore, even if you hired somebody new in the IT department, they're going to be involved to some extent simply because of their specialized needs. Uh, I met with people from the fire department and their computers are antiquated. There was a server sitting there that I have no idea how old it is. They don't have any idea how old it is. And it goes down and it doesn't go down. When it goes down, somebody has to come out and restart it. And part of that issue, again, is the training uh, available to folks. And these are all budget issues, and I realize that. But I was hired to tell you what I found. And one of the reasons why I'm here tonight is since I've asked everyone that I can speak to in the town, government, employees, etc., what they want, I wanted to afford you folks the same opportunity. Is there something that you perceive that Rocky Hill needs to pursue as a direction associated with IT? I ask this question not just to get specific information, but also to help me be able to come up with a recommended plan on how to resolve all of these issues. Because I recognize you can't solve them all at once. So how we go about it, or how I propose to you that you go about it, is an issue that I really do need some input on. Uh, so, what do you folks want? What direction do you think Rocky Hill should go in? What issues do you think are the priority issues associated with it? Now, if you choose not to uh, raise the issue here because I'm surprising you, and, and I grant you that, that it is a surprise, uh, you're more than welcome to make available any emails to Jess and she will forward them to me so that I have a sense of where you folks are. I'll answer any questions and I would welcome any recommendations. Well, yes, sir. <clears throat> Maybe Councilor Gohan can help you with this. It, the microwave system, that's going to replace that phone system, correct? 
the one. I don't know. I think you, you talk about the phone system internal in the police department. You got it. No. 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 So that, that's that's strictly for radio and whatever else they want to use it for, right? right? Which is also AT and T, which they're getting parts off the internet for. Right. But I, may I ask him one yeah. question? What parts are they getting off the internet? Uh, it's my understanding the 911 system, in order to have it run XP, they had to buy some parts from eBay in order to get that system to run. So it's the 911 system that's a I problem, so. not the internal phone system. Oh, the internal phone system needs to be replaced too. I looked at an <laughs> entire rack that can be replaced by a box about that high and about that wide today. What right, do they but have right now. Pardon? What do they have right now? They have an antiquated phone system that is no longer made and soon will be, you won't be able to obtain parts for it. Okay. Are they still on Centrix? Right. I, I'd have to check my notes. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead, Timmy. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, no, be, well, but the, the parts for eBay are the, the microwave system if it's a 911. I think he's referring to, do we think we have a problem with the console at one time? The yes. parts have to become. There's three components. There's the re communication line that goes out. That runs through the phone system also outside. Right. There's the 911 system, which is part of um, the telephone system itself. And there's the console. We are working on the microwave system. As part of the capital improvements budget in the upcoming year, the chief and I have discussed this because it's something we can't afford in one year. We will be d dividing up into three years the replacement of the police console, and that will improve some of the equipment that's in that server room. On top of that is the issue of the telephones within the building. Mm -hmm. I do not believe when we redid the building, we redid the telephones. However, there is now, as we, if we improve our computer system to some degree and we get on the CEN, the next thing we can go to is a computer generated computer, and I'm not a technical person, so there's phone systems, and somebody better help me, um, that run through computer systems. The town of Manchester does this. Voice over IP is right. Yes, and to. that is what I think will be the next step for us once we straighten out IT. I also have some recommendations that I will be looking into offline relative to our in-house staffing and some training. You have to understand the reason I requested the study was partially as um, we took IT out of facilities and we assigned it and broke the facilities department down from one super department. I really needed to get a handle on where we were. I had my own suspicions and my suspicions are being proven true and it's contrary to what I was previously told by the person who headed facilities, mm -hmm. okay? And um, based on that, we need to have a roadmap so we know what we need to do in the future. And this was made clear to the council at the time. To be honest with you, to make sure that I had no input into what he's presenting to you tonight, I have not met with him. I'm hearing this at the same time you are. Okay. Now, and I think anybody sitting up here, being some people less knowledge about technology and stuff, if we were to update this, the way technology is, how many years do you get out of it? It depends on the product that you're updating. From switches, you can get five years, maybe a couple of years after that, depending on the switch, depending on how your network is configured. If you're dealing with workstations with constantly improving software, then on the far outside, you're looking at five years. Some would say three, uh, compromises four years down the road. You need to replace them. Uh, one of the things that I'm familiar with because I've had to deal with budgets and, and so forth uh, over the years is there is an advantage as far as your budget process is concerned to leasing, lease to own. You divide up the cost over multiple years you get an opportunity to purchase more equipment up front, and anything that you choose to keep at the end of that lease, you pay a buck for, and it's yours. The advantage that that has is, as well is that you can extend out the uh, support system that you would get from the manufacturer. So if you have a four-year lease, as an example, or a three-year lease, your warranty goes out for the entire time. So they either fix it or replace it. 
there are definite advantages both in budgeting as well as uh, support in a leasing system. But it's a choice. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a panacea, but it's a choice. Do, do we have an off-site backup on everything? We have off-site backup on those materials that we must have off-site backup. Um, a lot of, Jess has started backing a lot of our stuff up onto the cloud, um, into cloud accounts. Um, in addition to that, we have all of our land records are stored um, at Iron Mountain. We must keep copies of it as well as we have digital copies of all of our land records. Um, well, I believe we have the same thing done for the tax records. We have to have certain things ready that if a disaster were occur to occur, we could retrieve all those records that we must keep for perpetuity. Vital statistics are kept in the same fashion. Um, those records that must be kept, yes, some of the records I would say not everything is kept off-site and microfilmed. We follow the state's retention schedule and those records, some of them that we must keep for such as um, certain personnel records, election records, we store it in the vault over in the old town hall. And as it relates to backup associated with IT, that was an issue that the IT staff raised in the sense that the amount of backup that they are expected to back up in digital form is very close to meeting their total capability, which means backup needs to be improved in that process. In addition to that, I have uh, identified that there are some folks who save things to their C drive on their workstation and a few not many, but a few of those files are never put onto the server, so therefore they are not backed up. But anything of critical nature, as the town manager has indicated, is backed up. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't lose something if a machine went down. Well, no, I mean, for instance, Lisa's in the back there. I mean, all of the programs she runs and stuff mm -hmm. for Parks and Rec, I mean, that, that stuff that probably per state statute doesn't have to be done, but should be. I mean, if you lost all that work, it'd be a nightmare. Well, one of the advantages that you have in the server setup, because it's a cluster, they all share data as well as programming. So if one of those machines were to go down, you still have duplicates. But in addition to that, there are certain things that need to be backed up uh, on a tape, removed from the server itself, um, you know, this is a small thing. It's not so small if it occurs, but it's a small thing. One of the first things I noticed when I went into the server room, sprinklers. Mm -hmm. You can't have water <laughs> where servers are and switches are. And one of the things that you'll see in my report is that needs to be replaced with a fire containment system that is not going to destroy the machines because you'd have to come up with you know, <coughs> half a million dollars to replace everything that's currently there, if you could. So, I mean, that's a small thing, but it just amplifies the kinds of things that I'm sure uh, you all have a sense that need to be done, this needs to be done, or that needs to be done. I'm trying to look at all of them. And I'm also sure that when they built the, the building, that it wasn't necessarily a consideration on the part of the planning committee and or the building committee or the architect, et cetera, though from my point of view, it should have been part of the architect's responsibility uh, to make sure that sprinklers were not going to be where switches and servers are. I, I, uh, Councilor Moriarty, are you all set? Yeah. Uh, right Councilor Gohan, before I get to you, uh, Councillor Casasanta had a question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Picard, for your update. Um, a couple of things. If you ask me what my wish list would be, it's security. Um, it, were, it seems to me, and I'm not sure why, um, you know, this is my first term on the council, so I'm not sure the history of the IT department and, and all of that and who was responsible for what at the time, but from issues of connectivity to the firewall to uh, software not consistent to hardware not supported, those raise huge red flags for me. Mm -hmm. um, the nutmeg project sounds great. Again, security is utmost. I mean, so much information, our town residents, us as counselors, um, staff members here at town hall, the town manager, 
that's paramount. Um, that needs to be really included in a, a consistent capital improvement plan going forward. It, it, technology changes day to day, month to month, year to year. We need to be up to date, and that's the only way we're going to do it is to is to you know look at your report, get your figures down in terms of dollars amount. Um, the connectivity between the town manager and Jess's computer, I'm not sure why that, I mean, software upgrades, can, you know, connecting that way, that can't be a difficult situation to rectify, I'm sure, um, aside from the, the balance of the other issues we have going on. So if I was to suggest a wish list, it would be a huge upgrade in security, like you've mentioned comprehensively. John um, Novakowski, who is one of mm -hmm. your techs, and yes, I had a conversation associated with that. And he's already begun the process of investigating replacement firewalls that would be more current. So your concern is a concern that he has recognized and has begun to take some steps to, do, to rectify. So, I mean, while it's an issue that I will address, it's in the um, process. He, he is already making an attempt to do some of that. Great. That's good to hear. Thank in you. I will address the reason our computers cannot talk is my computer is 10 years old mm -hmm. and it was not budgeted for this year, so I will be budgeting for one next year for my replacement <laughs> okay. person. Take Capital improvement. Money. What? Take my iPad money. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Capital improvement. I think we all need to really consider this as, as a major, major uh, necessity going forward. Um, so thank you for your input. Thank you. Yes, thank Councilor you. Councilor Kohanek. Uh, two questions for you. Number one, I don't know why a Halon system wasn't installed in there either, because that's standard. If you were given this job of picking two things to do right off the get-go, what would they be? I don't know that I could reduce it to two things. Well, you only had two. You only had money for two. <laughs> How's that sound? It's that bad. Um, I knew it. Well, I, I try to be somewhat creative in, in doing more than two. But you need to replace uh, the backbone of the system. Switches uh, would be an important issue. Um, you need to address the issues associated with the police department. You need to address the issues associated with antiquated uh, hardware. Now, some of that you can postpone a bit, but there's, you know, a 10-year-old machine is just. Well, that's one thing. But I'm talking about the big nut. Your um, your servers, your uh, you're telling me you're telling me that these things are in a cluster. If one fails, the other one has the same information. They, they all operate in what is called a failover cluster. So, cluster. if the capability of the system is 50, when you put something in the first one and it goes into this other four, is that count towards the 50, or is it is it like? 46 left do you do you use your memory up oh, with I a system see. like that talking. well if if you were to lose say two of those four machines all of the people who are running terminals would have difficulties there are all sorts of issues that people are having now is uh, with logging on it's some machines it takes 15 minutes to actually uh, sign into your system and get logged on to the computer um, if if you were to lose some of the machines in this cluster, you'd wind up having longer logon times. Access to files would take longer. Um, you would need to upgrade memory to allow each of these machines to, in effect, have more horsepower. So wouldn't that be part of your oh, yeah, first choice? Is. Yeah. But I don't like to be pigeonholed on two things when I look at so many issues. Well, we happen to be pigeonholed because it costs money. That's the deal. And I agree with you. And I understand that. So in order to put some guidance into this presentation, if you were had to be sitting here, what would you recommend? Well, I will give you some written recommendations as to how to approach solving these issues. Um, because it sounds very expensive what you're talking about. Some things are going to be expensive, um, but again, what do, what do we call expensive? Um, for you, it might be you know fifteen thousand dollars could be expensive, and in the scheme of things, it's really not a whole lot of money. Uh, so let me do some more numbers and be able to make some recommendations, even if it means we go out for you know four years 
and, and try Some to resolve this. Some kind of a plan this. that might yes. be a well, template for us to Well, that's what Barbara use. asked me to do, and that's part of my okay. final proposal. Okay. Um, next, we have Councillor Vargas, but it just sounds to me like the number one priority you're speaking of is to properly budget for our IT system. You got it. Okay, just a couple of summary questions. Um, what is the status of you presenting a final report to us? Um, the, the time frame was in January. I'm not sure exactly what date yet, um, but it will be in January so that you can use it in your budget process. Otherwise, my study is, you know, it's nice, but you've got to wait a whole year in order to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now, in your report, will you be prioritizing your results? I'm going to lay out over the next uh, three, four years certain things that I think you may wish to address. Obviously, when you, as Joe indicated here, uh, deal with the actual numbers, uh, you may choose to do something that's a little bit cheaper from the second year in the first year and move the first year into the second. I can't control that. All I can do is make some recommendations in a sequence that I think would be applicable. Okay, uh, third question, will you, uh, your report contain dollars as far as when you prioritize they will have dollars, whether there'll be upgrades or repairs needed, you'll be associating some sort of dollar I amounts? will be associating some dollars associated with everything. Okay, and my final question is, we're gonna get the report and then will you be available after we have a time to read the report? I, I don't want to get the report and have you standing here. I would rather read the report, go through it, and then have you come back if, if need be so that we could question you a little bit more so that we do budget correctly. When the initial presentation was made before you folks actually said, yeah, go ahead and do this, it was expected that the council would receive a copy of the report in time to be able to look at it so that when the actual presentation is made before the council in January, then you would have had it in your hand. Okay. In addition to that, if you folks would like me to come back at another time to answer questions either for the full council or a committee or however you wish to approach it, I, I can make myself available. Okay, I just want to make sure because yeah. after you read something and, and you know we have a discussion, I, I want to be I able to all ask the time. questions. I have questions. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. Councillor Drapeau. Thank you for your presentation and I look forward to the report that Councillor Vargas has uh, referred to. Um, first, I'd like to say that uh, in corporate America, we all live in a world where IT, is, the second you buy the machine, the server, the software, it is outdated. Uh, it goes across every company in the country. So while your rather scary um, description of our situation here is uh, eye-opening, I would recommend that uh, the most important, in my experience, the most important things that the taxpayers of Rocky Hill need to be concerned about are Hardware, security software, as Meg had indicated before, the, the, the towns, the taxpayers of this town need to have their data secure and they need to be assured that they're secure. Everything else is far, and for me, is, no, is a distant number two. Third, um, have you thought about, uh, in terms of emergency action plans, you know, to refer to Councilor Moriarty's statement a while ago, we can't be the only town that has a lack of an emergency, you know, if your data goes down, where does it go? If you do, you know, do you lose it? Um, and I'm referring, what I'm referring to is something that I do in, that, I, that I've, in my, my personal uh, career and job, we have um, consortiums with other, other businesses mm -hmm. where we all back up our data to a data center at a place that we all have decided is a good place to go. So if one town goes down, I'm saying, I'm referring to that, uh, if, if it's a possibility, if we were to partner with a Newington or a Cromwell, where all of our data gets backed up to one location, we all share the cost, uh, and wherever the secure, whoever has the most secure place. So if our systems go down, we know that we have a central place for us to go access it when this stuff comes back up. 
uh, and there are other communities that are running some of the same software that you folks do and it's my understanding that Rocky Hill is on the leading edge associated with the implementation of some new pieces of software or hardware for the purposes of providing protection in in the community but I don't disagree with you and y you know um, somewhere there needs to be uh, an ability to continue to run and the cluster that I spoke about before is a huge advantage in being able to do that what we need to do is to make sure that that is updated for capabilities and the fact that it's in two separate buildings yes it's on a similar campus but one building goes down you still have the other building and Iron Mountain provides a number of different uh, um, options as far as storage in addition to paper storage so I'm sure that um, you know the town manager will be uh, looking at that yeah I know of nothing of what you're recommending that exists but I do know what you're talking about from my years when I worked at the University of Hartford so I understand just what you mean by the consortium and however um, the Kappa Region Council of Governments is always looking for um, projects that can be done by multiple communities and I'm going to bring this to them and they they would be a, a great choice for hosting anybody who wishes to participate in it and what they I might recommend to them is they look at a regional grant see if we can get a regional grant to start forming some type of document recovery center where things can be stored for recovery I think it's a perfect project for them and I'm going to take your suggestion and I'm going to see what I can do to get them to run with it the, uh, that's fantastic and I and I might add that Rocky Hill should not be taking on the burden of having its own backup and redundancies when we could ease um, when the, the redundancies themselves are just a fail -safe. yeah we can easily share costs with other towns which will mitigate yeah. the expense that there are certain departments that statutorily have to have their own backup because it's uh, the town clerk's office is one with the land records and vital statistics um, each town uses a different there's two or three vendors for the type of indexing systems each town may we don't really have the same system as Weathersfield our systems couldn't be backed up to each other you also have to be careful when you back up with them because that's why you'll never see a, a county clerk system because everybody has a page 150 in book 300 um, and they're all entire different documents and there's the way things are indexed and required to be indexed by the state but that's something those in systems we have are systems that are required through state statute beyond that it's what we do internally and we don't pay for it um, but we do need to look at doing something because we can't be backing it up I have more little files stored and downloaded to different places than you can ever imagine so that I can find everything from my emails to my different documents I would consider personal files or business files um, I'm talking business being, files not being stored on a central server to be a matter of policy yeah and I think that that could be fixed internally yes and that's why I sought this help okay deputy mayor bell okay yes um, most of my questions have been answered um, asked and answered previously um, but I did want to thank you for the eye-opening yet disturbing I guess account of where we are and although I think we clearly need to focus on where we go from here I think we do need at some point to look at lessons learned and how we got here um, because we sat here three years ago and we assessed the Panologic cubes and the hardware we were purchasing and it, I thought at the time it was really well scrutinized by the council uh, a lot of questions were asked a lot of research was done yet we were assured that we were on the right road and and we are in good shape so I think that before we're totally done with this exercise we really do need to take a look at lessons learned from this and how to prevent you know a repeat of well I think to some extent if I can just jump in mm -hmm. um, what occurred three years ago as far as the servers and to some extent uh, uh, moving things to a terminal was a, a great thing you have you know I, I it seems like I'm being very alarmist in many of the comments because I, I need to address things that I find need to be addressed but you have a core 
of things that are very, very positive, and they come out of that study that was done and implemented three years ago. And that is you've got servers, a cluster. That doesn't mean you won't have to replace them in the future, mm -hmm. but that whole design is a really positive design as far as ensuring the ability of a community to, to continue to do its work. Uh, but I guess I would ask, I, I'm, I'm hearing somewhat of a disjoint. On one hand, I'm hearing, you know, all the issues we have, mm -hmm. yet we made some good decisions, so yes. but how your are decisions we in such bad were, shape? <laughs> were, were focused on certain things, and my uh, charge was to look at as much as I possibly could and make some recommendations um, as to mm -hmm. what I think you ought to be uh, addressing now and in the future. And one of those recommendations is going to be to build on what you've already done on a positive side. Okay. Great. Well, I look forward to that report. Uh, Councilor McDonald. Thank you. Um, I'll send you my notes uh, separately through the, uh, through the mayor because I think, you know, you covered a lot of items. First thing, Dr. Picard, I really appreciate your effort and what you've done to date. When we talk about some of the key items that we're concerned with, obviously, I know we talked about security, both physical, logical. I'm also interested in our mobile device security as, as that's being rolled out more and more. But when I hear things about police and fire having antiquated uh, equipment and, you know, we have five police officers who I thought should be, you know, performing those roles of a police officer and not an IT person, you know, that's disappointing and unacceptable overall. I think the lack of a technology plan, the town, I think with a very defined technology plan that's tied to a capital improvement plan, half these issues go away or they're, or they're migrated over a period of time. You also asked what else is concerning. I mean, we need a well-controlled, stable environment. It doesn't appear we have that right now. We talk about uh, storage, you know. I just learned today that we're putting stuff out to the cloud. I don't know if, if that was a presentation that was done before. I'd really be interested, have you looked at the cloud security? Is it a public cloud, Jess, or I mean, or, or, or is it a public cloud we're using? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, a, it's a big difference. It's okay. passing, backing up what we have into uh, the Microsoft cloud, basically from our telephones and stuff like that. So you our data that's on your Extremely careful stored. when you're using the cloud, and you know it's very easy to click and shoot it, but when you have both public and you know, you know you know this ten times what I do, but certain data should never ever be out there. No. Now I'm hoping the data we're putting out there isn't any taxpayer personal identification information. I don't believe it is. But, <laughs> but until we do a, a research of it, and we and I think uh, Councillor Drapeau mentioned it, you know, uh, I'll, detailed enforceable security policy. Do we have one? IT security policies. That's been migrated to all employees. They understand it. They live by it. Probably not. That to me is the backbone of a, of a well-controlled environment. And, and then, you know, you know, we talk about contingency planning, backup and recovery, business resumption. Have you done a business impact analysis of, of all the key data we have? How long can we be down without having information regarding, you know, taxes or the assessor or whatever it is? I mean, that is a detailed plan that, that it doesn't look like we have. When I hear we're buying any part on eBay <laughs> is a joke, okay? It's unacceptable, and a town of a budget of, what's our budget, 70 million, 60 million? I mean, huge numbers. The fact that we have t a manager with a 10-year PC is unacceptable. The fact that we buy in, uh, any equipment over the internet, especially through eBay, is, is just not what I think the taxpayers deserve. So again, you know, these are training, you know, you can go down the whole list. It's really when you look at, you know, IT is really defined under COVID. Okay, and COVID's a methodology to really handle the, all the different domains of IT. Based on what I've seen, we failed every domain of COVID, hands down, okay? Except for the personnel. I, I think you're right, we have very strong people involved, but given the limited resources they have, the technical uh, skills you need, some of the skills are so specific, especially when it comes to networking or hardening the, the, the network, the servers, that's something that should be outsourced to a specific individual or firm that actually does that. 
you know, to think that we can do all for everything, we can't do that. Can. So I really look forward to your report, and hopefully you'll address some of these issues mm -hmm. myself and others brought up. Yeah. Councilor Moriarty. Yeah, Nadine, you brought up a good point there. <coughs> I think the best thing with having the doctor do the survey is, and when he put his original presentation on, that he wasn't brand Pacific. And that's what happened with that last thing. When the company came in here, and those of us who were sitting there, sitting in there telling us, you know, this is the best thing since sliced bread and canned beer. Mm -hmm. you know, and we're believing what these people are selling us because it went through facilities. And we sit up here, and I mean, I'm, I can turn a computer on. That's about it. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not claiming the fame. I know anything about IT. Um, but that's what happens. But I think that the fact that he's not brand Pacific, he's not out here selling anything, is a huge part that this is going to be what we need when the survey is done. Councilor Zepps. Thank you. Dr. Picard, I, I also will be emailing my suggestions in because right. I'm just hoping that you don't do another interim report prior to the final report com that no, comes out. This, <laughs> that's why I'm here. I want input, and at the same time, you guys asked for an interim, so yep. I figured I'd give you some interim information. Oh, I'll give you the opportunity of completing the report. <laughs> Actually, he wanted to commit the last meeting, but I really didn't want to blow you out of the chairs your first council meeting. Oh, so you waited until the second one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. You want to wait to the third one? Oh. <laughs> now I figured by then. <laughs> I want to ruin my Christmas. Okay, my I, I just have a home question for you. Um, we talked about funding for our IT department, IT systems, and you and I spoke privately about the staff for IT. Um, you talked about replacing computers every four years and leasing them for four-year terms. You said some computers in the town are 13 years old. Yeah, you got a, you got a couple of them running around out it, there. Is it your opinion, then, that they should have been replaced or addressed and eight funded nine, eight, nine years ago? Yeah. So in your report, knowing that you have roughly 160 computers on the town hall side. Um, are you going to go over an IT staff that you consider to be adequate and properly funding or turnover rate for the computers? I mean, it's not something I want to do all 160 at any one time, and you talked about leasing to break it up. Well, you're asking whether or not I believe that this computer versus that computer should be replaced, it is not my intention to deal with individuals. That's really a significant uh, task. What I have found in consistently that you have a lot of machines that should have been replaced a long time ago, and that's what I'm going to make a proposal on. There are some machines that don't need to be replaced, but may need to be updated. Um, so, I mean, the IT staff should be able to um, come up with their knowledge of uh, what machines are very current, meaning purchased in the last year, mm -hmm. and therefore don't need to be replaced. But you do need to have some kind of a plan for avoiding what we have right now, which is machines that are current and machines that are so antiquated as to be not very useful. Okay, and just the other thing is, I, everybody talked about priorities. My priority is to make sure that, you know, the people of Rocky Hill are protected and a 911 system that goes down or isn't adequate or can go down at any time, I have a real problem with. Um, so if you could make sure to yep. talk about that in your report, how to keep it up. If, if I can just make a comment <laughs> as it relates to the eBay thing. I don't want anybody here to think that they're going out to go to eBay to find the thing that they're going to need because that's a good place to go. They're going to eBay because they can't get it anyplace else. Mm -hmm. It's even worse. Amazon. Yeah. Worse. Amazon. I, I understand that, but I don't want anybody to reach the conclusion that you have staff who are saying, well, let's go on eBay and buy it. That's not the case. This was pointed out to me by Sergeant Phelps when we started having trouble just before we decided to go to the microwave system. And the microwave system was Sergeant Phelps and the chief's uh, recommendation for the first component that we go with. 
Um, because we had a savings in bonding last year that was a one-year savings, we used that towards the microwave system. But it's clearly evident we have to keep working to replace the equipment over there, and we need to start budgeting for it. And some of it may not be able to be put out over several years. Some of it is probably going to have to be done in one year. And the phone system over there is something. Hopefully the CEN network or the Nutmeg network will get up and running quick and we can go to a, the IDP type system of phones and have something that's much more current and much more easily controlled. At the same time, we're looking for methods in which we can save money. And if we can save mon money such as we will with the Nutmeg network and our monthly costs for connectivity, we'll be all set. I expect once we get up and operating with the Nutmeg network, we'll save about half of what we're spending now because we use Cox Cable as our internet provider as well as our connectivity. And um, the pr first component that will be going up for sure will be the police department because this started as a public safety and an educational project with the state to get the municipalities to hook up, be allowed to hook up and not have to pay the rate of a private carrier took about two years to get through the legislature, legislature, and that just occurred last spring. I agree. I think the police department is paramount. Somebody gets stopped and we can't check if they have warrants or perhaps they shouldn't be on the street. I think that's a real problem for Rocky Hill. Do we have any final questions? I'm not suggesting that that exists currently. I, I want to emphasize that. It, they're able to perform the functions they need to perform. My concern is the equipment that they're using is antiquated and needs to be replaced so that they can continue to do what they need to do, want to do, and are determined to do, and that is to protect the, the townspeople. For this type of things that you were just talking about, may I say something? I'm sorry, I just started speaking. Um, they operate off the state's collect system and collect is something that is restricted to certified police dispatchers as well as to the police officers. And it's a state records database. And they rely on that as well as our own local information. So between the mobile tech and the collect system, um, that information is always stored and it's backed up other than through the town. It's not on town computer type information. We just are a conduit to get to it. Very good. Any final questions? We're all set. Thank you. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you, Dr. And I look Thank forward you. to any other comments that you send. Okay. Thank you.